Hello there and welcome back to another part of my how to edit your landscape images. Um, in one of my previous uh, videos I did a short edit on how to uh, edit your Milky Way photos in Lightroom 5. Today I'm going to just take it a little bit of a step further and take that image into Photoshop um, and show you a little bit how to uh, take it further in Photoshop to get the best out of it. Um, I'm going to be doing very basic adjustments in my Lightroom. Um, exactly the same as what you can do in Camera Raw, uh, should you be using that. So, right, let's, let's get uh, started with this. Um, as you see, this is the raw image straight from the camera. Um, I was using a Canon 6D with the 1740 uh, f4 L lens, shot at ISO 2000 f4 at 30 seconds. Um, as you can see in the raw image, it's, it's quite dark. Um, and in the right hand corner here, I've got my buddy's camera in the in the photo which we will crop out later. Right, so let's get started to get uh, some detail into that Milky Way. Uh, first I will up my exposure to about uh, one and a third stop um, to get some light in the sky. I will increase my contrast to about uh, 30 points. Uh, the contrast increases um, the light and darkens the dark in the dust fields in the in the in the Milky Way, so you'll get some nice uh, detail coming out between the light and the dark. Next up, we'll increase a little bit of the highlights, just to add a little bit more light in there. Um, we'll increase a little bit of the shadows, just to get a little bit more light in the rest of the sky. On the whites, we will up that a bit as well, and the blacks we might drop just like a couple of small little points. Uh, very important slide is the clarity because the clarity is going to be bringing in a lot of local contrast and mid-tone contrast into that Milky Way. Um, and as soon as we start sliding it you'll, you'll start seeing that. Um, on normal images, uh, landscape images, I won't uh, be, do, be using so much clarity because it's quite a hectic effect on normal daytime landscapes but for stars it's absolutely magic. I've taken it up to about 50 points and you can immediately see there's lots and lots of details uh, coming out in those dust fields and the uh, bright um, star clouds there. Next up we're going to be, be playing a little bit with the tone curve. So let's increase a little bit of the highlights. Let's do a little bit more on the lights. On the darks we can darken it a tad. On the shadows we can up just a, just a little bit. With these long exposures your sensor gets quite hot so it will record a very warm image so let's bring down a white balance just a just a tad to to bring out a little bit of that cold in the night sky that should do it really nicely just a small little bit next up we're gonna be um, sharpening it and applying some noise reduction because obviously at ISO 2000 um, zoomed into full, there's quite a bit of noise happening there, but that's not unmanageable. It's very easy to uh, sort out in, in Lightroom and in Photoshop. So sharpening, I will up it to about 50, 50 points. Radius, I will keep it as is. Detail, we can up it a little bit more because we wanted to, to bring out a little bit of the detail in the star. So that's at 100%. So let's just to the difference there. The next thing is very important, the masking, because now we only wanted to work on those little light points in the sky there, not on the actual noise in the image. So we're going to be holding down the Alt key and then we, as soon as you start clicking on the mask it's going to turn completely white. The further you go towards the right it will start bringing out little black details. So everything that's black will not be sharpened and everything that's white will be sharpened. So we want to take it up so you can basically just get the outlines of the windmill and the and the star. So about 90 should do it nicely. So now if you zoom in back to 100% it's removed quite a bit of the noise in, in, in the sky there and it's left the um, stars nice and clear. So let's just look at it before and after on that. Wrong one. That's it. That was before you had quite a bit of uh, 
Um, color noise is happening there as well. So as soon as we switch it on, it's cleared up a lot of that noise there. Next up we'll move the actual noise reduction slider, but not much. We're going to do it about, at about 10 points. Even though there's still quite a bit of noise in the sky, that adds a little bit of texture and detail to the image. Otherwise it's going to look completely flat and you're going to be losing a lot of detail. As you see there, if you move it up to 74, it's just flat and lifeless. So let's zoom that out. It looks almost plasticky. So as soon as you bring it back down to about 15 points and start looking more realistic. We'll move the detail up a slight bit and also on the contrast. As you can see there's not much color noise happening there so we're going to leave that slider as it is at the moment. Alright so that's your basic edits done in Lightroom. So let's move on over to Photoshop. I've already opened up this image in Photoshop. You can simply go by right clicking edit in Adobe Photoshop CS6 or whichever one you've got installed. So let's move on over to and as you can see I've cropped out my buddy's camera on the right hand side here and a slight bit of the bottom and a slight bit of the top. Right first thing as always we, what we do in in Photoshop is we duplicate that layer by Command J or Control J on Windows, and I do it again. So I've got two two layer copies sitting above my original one, and what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be um, changing the blending mode of my top one to screen, and you'll see it'll it'll go very light in there. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding a mask to that top layer, and holding down Command and I we're going to be inv inverting that mask. So whatever, we're going to be pa painting that mask onto the bottom layer as we're sitting now. So make sure you've got your brush tool selected and you've got uh, your layer palette with white at the top there because we're going to be revealing um, what we've done earlier. So just to show you the effect, I'm going to be setting my brush to 100%. So Remember that top layer is a screen um, blending mode, so it, it's gone very light. So just to show you what it will give you now with the inverted mask and a white brush, it will give you a very white section there. Obviously, the more you go over it, the more you bring out, you bring out that uh, uh, screen layer there. But we don't want that, so let's just remove all of that. So setting your brush down to a low opacity of about 20%, we're going to be painting in that Milky Way, just to lighten it up a little bit. And again, the more you go over it, the more pronounced it will be. So let's have a look at that mask. That's where you painted it. Next up, what we're going to do, be doing is we're going to be setting this the blur on this image just to soften the edges on the actual brushing that you did. I've, I've selected the Gaussian blur for that. There we go. We select quite a nice big radius and we just select OK. So instead of just having a hard edge on, on here, we've now just softened that edge. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be merging these two layers. Let me just show you before and after. So you can see we've lightened up that Milky Way quite a bit there. Next up, on top of that layer, we're going to be adding a curves adjustment layer because we're going to be adding some contrast into that uh, image. So let's just grab the curves adjustment layer there and we're going to be pulling up the highlights and we're going to be dropping the shadows. And as you can see it brings out a lot of detail in that um, into that Milky Way but it's also overexposing these highlight areas here but we will sort that out now. 
Now with, you, with your brush tool selected, we're going to be brushing back again a little bit of the bottom layer of that lightness at the top there. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be selecting a black brush by just selecting X. Going to be moving up our opacity and you will see on your mask we are bringing back that bottom section there. So what we don't want is, we just want to lighten up the darker areas that got affected by uh, the curves adjustment. We're just going to be leaving the actual Milky Way alone in this image. Now I would flatten that uh, <coughs> um, layer again, or just merge those two layers. So you've got one layer, so it's just, just, as you can see, there's just contrast brought into the Milky Way in that section, but we're going to be sorting out those highlights now. So just what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding a burn layer on top of that. So if you go down to the bottom here, you're going to be holding down Alt, click on a new layer, which is going to be bringing up your uh, layer properties, and we're just going to call that layer burn. On blending mode, we're going to be selecting overlay, and you're just going to say fill with uh, overlay ne neutral color 50% gray. You just select that, and you'll see you, you've got a, a neutral gray um, layer coming onto here. You're going to be you're going to stay on your brush tool and stay on the, uh, the black selected brush. So now, seeing as we've got a high opacity, you're going to be darkening it, but that's obviously too much. So let's just Get rid of that. Take your opacity down to about 10% and decrease the brush size. So now we're just going to be brushing in, just going to be darkening some of those areas. My best is to do it with a couple of clicks. Just follow all the dust fields and bring them out a little bit um, just to get those just get that detail going there. And as you can see now it's quite a patchy a patchy look that we've got there. But now we're gonna be turning down the opacity on this burn layer to about 40%. And you're gonna be sorting out a lot of the actual patches in that. So let's just Zoom this back a bit and you can see the overall effect much better. That's a really, really nice effect. You can even darken those highlighted areas a tad more. Alright, so that is what I would have done to uh, edit the Milky Way image in Photoshop. Uh, get lots of detail out in that um, Milky Way. Um, in the end, you can just go ahead and Flatten your image to get one single file, which you can then save as a TIFF or um, a PSD or just straight to JPEG from there. Right, thank you very much for watching and uh, please stay tuned for more videos coming soon. And if you found this useful, please leave a comment, a like or a share would also be appreciated. Thank you very much.